Coach Knowles to the first person who raises their hand. Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com, second row. Um, we were talking to defensive backs over the course of the, the spring. We were talking to, uh, I guess the one that jumps to my head is, is Jordan Hancock talking about how he's playing corner and nickel. So was there a point at which you decided that you maybe had to be more multiple in the back than you were last year? Are we reading that wrong? Do you, do you not expect to be more multiple back there? No, I just think it's trying to put the best guys in the best positions, trying to get your best 11 on the field, being prepared for matchups, right, as they come now or in the future, kind of a long-term thing. So we get the right people, you know, and when, when we need them on a slot. Um, it's good to get Jordan prepared for that so that he understands it. Uh, I'm sorry, second row right, uh, Bill Landis, Rivals, the podcast. Jim, um, I'm, I'm assuming you've gotten into some of the Jack stuff by this point with C.J. Hicks. Um, how has that looked to you? Has it, has it matched up with what you thought that might look like? Did you consider the possibilities? Yeah, I like uh, CJ there. Um, Mitchell Melton, too. Both those guys have been active and, um, you know, understanding of the system and and making a lot of plays. You know, there's some freedom that goes with it, and I think there's a, there's a future for both of them. Do you have an idea at this point as you're closer to a game what percentage of the time you'd like to use that with your defense? That's private information. Yeah, <laughs> got to keep that. There's spies listening. <laughs> Third row right, Dan Hope, 11 Warriors. Jim, have Sonny and Jihad kind of solidified themselves as starting safeties at this point, or are you still working your way through that? Sonny has. Sonny has. Sonny is, uh, you know, he's definitely um, a guy we're going to have on the field as much as we can. He, he's, uh, he can match up, you know, to both uh, 11 and 12 personnel when people bring in two tight ends. He gives us a lot more versatility. Um, Jihad's doing well. Uh, you know, been banged up a little bit. Um, you know, in that high safety area, you know, you're looking at Lathan for sure. He's had a great camp, great spring. And then um, you're looking at Proctor and Malik and Jihad. You know, really those three are fighting it out for that other position. Um, and between the three of them, they'll play there and also back up uh, uh, Lathan. Yeah. But there's very much a competition still going on for that other spot. Uh, third row right, Tony Gerdman, Buckeye Huddle. Malik Hartford has a possibility, true freshman, free safety. What kind of concerns has, I guess, maybe he alleviated over camp? And what kind of concerns would that give you? It's day to day, but um, you feel Malik's presence on the field. And I think when you're when you're talking about DBs, right? We all want to feel their presence on the field, including you, the fans. You want you want to you want to feel it. And and Malik is a guy who um, is going to show up around the ball. Um, he's very smart. Um, yeah, of course you worry about you know, freshman mistakes. And back there, a mistake is costly. So, you know, it's our job to judge his progress. You know, um, he's on that, he's on that path. You know, he's on, he's on that path. And, and we just got to keep fine tuning it. Third row left, Andy Anders, 11 Warriors. Uh, yes, how, how have you seen the defensive line progress throughout camp? What's been the level of pressure, and how does it maybe tie in with some of the, you know, you're talking about the secondary game more hands-on balls. How have they been playing complementary coverage yeah, versus rush? right. You know, I've said, I say coverage and rush, and the whole defense says working together. It's it's hand-in-hand. Hand. And um, our, rushmen, our rushmen have had a great camp. You know, we have uh, four ends there that I think are – as good as anyone in the country. I think the depth there is fantastic. I think um, you have elite players. You have potentially elite players. JT, Jack, Kenyatta, Caden Curry is just a, a guy who's going to show up and make plays. So you got four really good ends, you know, and, and, and I feel like the rush has been strong. We've certainly, again, that's, we've felt it. 
we felt it and seen it during camp. Uh, front row middle, Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Obviously, the big uh, issue at the end of last year was giving up big plays. What progress have you seen in that area? Through and I've seen progress, you know. I've seen uh, a conscientious effort on all of our parts to make sure that um, we fix whatever mistakes happen, learn from from those those, and get better. And and I've seen uh, myself develop um, in terms of coverages and uh, defenses that keep the ball more in front and inside. And you know, a um, development of myself. I mean, that's that's how I think a coach grows. You know, you can't be stuck in your ways. And, and um, you know, so I've done that, looked at everything. So we've added to the package or called some things more that put us in a, a, a better position to prevent those. You've got, you said what you said about the defensive ends. I know you've got a linebacker. You feel good about the secondary. Defensive tackles are, are good. Um, what questions do you have about this defense or just a matter of doing what you think they can do? Yeah, I want to make sure that we um, solidify that other safety position, like between, between um, Proctor and Malik and Jihad. I think that battle is still out there. So I, I want to make sure we solidify that. Um, our corner development has been great. Uh, Davison has, has been one of the best cover guys in camp. I mean, I think our receivers would say that. So between him and Jordan and Denzel, I see a ton of growth there. You're always concerned about uh, depth inside, you know, at defensive tackle because those guys just get beat up. It's a hard position. Um, but Mike Hall is is can be elite. Stay healthy. He's he's talented. Plays hard. Ty. Um, so you know, Ty Leak's been a little banged up, you know. So you see, you see waves during camp at that defensive tackle position where it can become thin quickly. Um, one of the young guys I think has had a really good camp is Hero, Hero Canoe. I mean, he he has showed up, so I think he's going to add to our depth there. Uh, far right, Adam King, WBNS. Coach, I'm I'm curious. Ryan says the QBs are equal. So in practice, you've got a scheme against both of them. Is there anything different between them? Or like when Kyle's in, do you, what do you change versus when Devin's in with the defense? No comment. Next. Yeah, I know it's a good question, but I, I, I can't participate. So you know. yeah, OK, go ahead. <laughs> what growth have you seen from Jack Sawyer putting his hand back in the ground? Yeah, I you know, last two days, actually, um, Jack, just put him in a silver bowl of the day last two days. He's really like, I felt like, you know, he was at a high level during camp. And then he last two days, he just kind of vaulted himself into being a, a, a dominant guy. So um, a lot of growth. I think that's been a good move to just have him concentrate on that. Uh, fourth row right, Spencer Holbrook, Letterman Roll. Jim, at the beginning of the offseason, it was JT and Jack as the two mainstays at defensive end. When did it become JT, Jack, and Kenyatta? Spring. You know, spring, really. I mean, Kenyatta showed up. He's got a great first step. I mean, you, you, you he jumps off the video. You know, it's just, uh, it's you, you can't deny that he's out there making plays and making life difficult for the offense. You've got a guy that athletic to pair, you know, whether you want to pair with Jack or with JT or just get him in space. Uh, do you have to reconsider whether you guys want to use the, the Jack position as much just because you have that athleticism from a true defensive end? And how does that go into whether you actually want it? Sure, it goes into it, absolutely. You know, you want to get the best players on the field in the best situations. You know, it's never about what I know or, or any – it's about what's best, you know, and – I think that's a real that's a real thing, you know. We got some talent there, so um, we got to feature those guys. And a lot of times, the best way to feature them is just let them put them, their hand down and go, you know. Back wall, Jeremy Birmingham, rivals the podcast. Jim, you mentioned Jack and the leap he's made being able to be in one spot. When you talk about a guy like Mitchell Melton, who has struggled with injury, 
but then moving back and forth position-wise, how important has it been for him this fall? And have you found yourself thinking maybe he should stay hand in the ground at defensive end as well because he's obviously moving up that that rank, and then you have a guy like C.J. Hicks who maybe is more built for the bullet or the jack as, as you have always sort of had. Yep, I think that's a real consideration, Mitch. Mitch, um, Mitch has grown a lot at just the regular, you know, the defensive end position. So taking him into that role, you know, you have to have consideration for what does that take away from him as a jack. Um, but he's really smart. Mitch is very smart, very level-headed. Um, but I've seen a lot of progress out of him at at defensive end. So that's how you have to you have to kind of look at it player by player and day by day and. How much are they are they handling it without diminishing other things that they do at other positions, and um, but it's certainly a consideration. Not to be too narrowed in on specific player, but where does Caden Curry fit into this defense? As you yeah, Caden's going to play a lot. I mean, you know, you could you know all along that front, he's going to fit. I think in different places because you know maybe not on rundowns, but you got to be ready for this guy to to do anything on pass downs because he's a he's he's a he plays hard and he's hard to handle for the opposite the offense so you know we can come up with any any different ways to get him on the field but you'll see him at a reg regular defensive end on a regular basis you may see him at other places in pass rush situations right we're right austin ward rivals the podcast 97.1 jim it seems that's like a, that's a lot i know it's <laughs> You got to keep them all straight. Jerry does a great job. When it seems like Cody Simon has had another, you know, solid camp for you all. It's, uh, I guess, I don't know if this qualifies as a, a secret for the spies, but it feels hard for us to like envision where exactly he fits for you. If with Tommy and Steele being out there so much, like, what do you kind of envision for Cody? Yeah, Cody's got to play a lot at linebacker, right? Because we need to. Same with CJ, right? I need to do a better job of project, projecting towards the end of the season. And that includes, like we talked about, with my defenses and what I plan for and those matchup games and how do we keep guys healthier over the long run. And I think that's where Cody comes in. You know, you gotta, he's, he's got to be in there a lot early on in the season as a regular linebacker. But you're still going to see him um, at a Sam position. You know, again, we have Sonny, so Sonny can be – really kind of interchangeable against all personnel. But when teams get really big, Cody's a guy you're still you're still going to see there. It feels like this question and then Burm asked it, like a lot of different guys have versatility to move around. Do you, do you feel like there's more depth and ability for you to create than at this time a year ago? Absolutely, you know, but uh, I have to be careful with that, right, because you want guys to know exactly what they're doing so that they can play fast, you know. So I have to always judge the, the creativity versus the um, fundamental uh, fundamentals necessary for playing a position and knowing exactly what to do um, to be able to do it quickly. So, but there is a you know there is enough there to to kind of you know, play around with in different spots and uh, I have to use my judgment of what's best for the defense in that. Got time for a couple more. Front row, Joey Kaufman, Columbus Dispatch. Jim, just to clarify with Sonny, he, he would start in safety spot would be nickel for him. And... Yeah, nickel Sam, strike, you know, maybe I'll call him a strike, you know, because, I don't know, nickel, Sam, single, yeah, and strike, I mean, I come up with strike. Maybe a strike's a cool name, but yeah. Yeah, so he's definitely a combination of those two. What what was it about that spot that was ultimately the suited him the best after getting to watch? I mean, you talked about him being kind of versatile and can do it all, but what, what was it about that spot in the secondary that that's sort of where you liked him? Yeah, well, you know, that, that has been ma mainly a uh, third corner DB type of spot for me. You know, brought, uh, Tanner came here from Oklahoma State and, and um, you know, then you get into a lot of situations where, you know, there's still uh, a, a tight end, you know, in that matchup there and, and not a slot, you know, and then you, you're kind of just trying to hold up with a nickel. And I and I saw in Sonny is that he has the ability to play high safety, to play man coverage, but he also has the length 
and the um, toughness to play up close to the ball. So you play him as a uh, in that uh, nickel strike position, and now you have a lot more flexibility in terms of, okay, is he man on the slot? Is he zone? Is he inside? Is he outside? Is he blitzing off the edge? You know, he just creates a whole other dynamic. I had a guy a lot like him. You guys might remember him, Jeremy Cash, who was at Ohio State, actually, and then came to Duke and was uh, the ACC Defensive Player of the Year and Jim Thorpe and all kinds of things. Because he was considered a DB, but he was really, you know, he was really almost like an outside linebacker. Sonny's, that's, that's kind of the body type there. And we'll, uh, we'll have uh, today's Elam ending end with Tim May. Rivals. I get it. Uh, Tim May podcast. If you were voting, if you had voted for Tommy Eichenberg as captain, if you were a player instead of a coach or something, why would you have voted Tommy Eichenberg captain for this team for a second straight year? Because I want a guy who, no matter what happens, no matter what the situation, when you get into that um, fog, you know, that happens out there when maybe you hit a little adversity. Um, I want a guy who's who's never going to flinch. You know, I want someone who's going to lead not so much through his words, but just by being a, a, a stalwart for the program. He's going to be there. He's going to be on the front line. He's going to be, you know, diagnosing things. He's going to be figuring it out if something goes wrong. He's, he's never going to point fingers. You know, he's always going to uh, – uh, look at his own um, deficiencies or plays that didn't go right. He's always going to be hard on himself. You know, he, he's just he's just that dude. You know. Yeah. And the other quick, uh, I asked Ryan about this a minute ago, but do you, do you feel like y'all? I don't know. The season hasn't started yet, but you now have got a preseason camp in, under the under your belts. Do you feel like y'all hit a home run in the transfer portal based on the guys you've got, Jihad, Taiwan Malone, and? Uh, and Igba Nosen, uh, how would you how would you describe uh, what they have brought, I guess, to the to the program? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I I don't I don't think we could have done better. So yeah, I would definitely consider it a success. Um, number one, because all three guys, um, you know, they're team guys, a good culture. None of them came in saying me me me, and what am I going to get? And um, you can throw them in right away at Ohio State. Again, you know, a great offensive system, and they compete. I mean, that's, you know, you can't do that with everyone, and they can get in there and they can compete. So, yeah, it's been good. Thank you. Coach, thank you very much.